down. Let's take it down uh, 1.2.3 millimeters. You have to take kind of light cuts on this machine. Right. Another three. Hence, one, two, three, and we'll be over halfway there. So you can see the flat forming on the top there. Okay, we'll take it in another three tenths. Uh, let's take it in two and a half. It gets just pretty darn close to our final size. And you certainly don't want to go over it. Okay, there it is. Now what I'm going to do at this point, because I want to be able to take a measurement. And so, I'm going to go ahead and flip it over and do the same thing on the bottom side so that we get the exact depth that we're going to need to finish this off. All right, let's see where we're at with this thing. I'll take a measurement. All right, normally, you know, if you had a larger machine, you wouldn't take it out of the, uh, out of the vise, but uh, it doesn't have to be all that accurate, number one. Number two, um, pretty hard to get in there and measure. So looking at this, 320, we're at 335. We've already taken a little further than we should. So I'm going to back off a few thousands or tenths of millimeters, and we'll do the other two sides. All right, now the proof will be in the pudding here as far as does it fit, does the nut fit on there or not. So let's Take a nut and see what we've got. We'll be coming in from this side here. And oh boy, there it does fit. But it ain't an easy fit. I'm gonna take another couple thou off of these two sides and try it again. Alright, well here it is. It's done. You can see we've milled off the four sides and got them flat. The nut fits over it. There it, did, there it goes. Okay, so the nut's okay. And uh, so this should right. work. Now well, there's our tool. It's uh, done, actually could be used now. I did drill the holes uh, on either end for the, uh, uh, so you can stick some pin or a screwdriver through here to get some leverage on it. But it's ready to go, and as we talked about at the beginning of this uh, video, um, I think it would be better if it were heat treated, in other words, if it were hardened. And so that's what we're going to do now. Um, and I watched a video the other day by uh, Tom's Techniques, and he's making, uh, what the heck is he making, a knurling tool or something. And what he did is he, he did a heat treat, but he did it in foil. But in the foil, he used, uh, he packed it with caseonite, but he got a little box and uh, filled the box with caseonite. Well, in this case, this is already uh, high carbon steel, so we don't need to add any carbon to it. Um, that's not what we're trying to do. Um, we just want to get it hot without having a lot of oxygen around it. So what we're going to do is uh, I looked around for a little box that I could use to pack this in and then put it into the foil. I couldn't find one, but I did find an, a paper towel dispenser, and I thought, well, that would work all right, I think. So I wired it up here on this end, and what we're going to do is pack this charcoal. I've just pulverized some uh, 
wood briquettes, hardwood briquettes, and we're going to pack that around the uh, tool inside this tube. Then we're going to put it into the foil, and when the oven gets hot enough, we're going to toss it in the oven for oh, maybe an hour or so would be more than enough for this size of a, of a tool. And then we'll quench it in water. Okay, I think we've got gutter. Trying to maintain it then between 1450 and 1500 on the temperature uh, to keep it up to that uh, critical temperature. Then we're going to um, pull it out. And the idea is to um, open the door and pretty quickly anyway, we will quench it in our bucket that we have down here. We've got it hanging on the on the uh, cart. Okay, it's been cooking in there for a while. What I'm gonna do is open up the uh, door and we'll see if we can't um, open the uh, foil up that we've been using. And hopefully we can open the foil up, test it to see if the uh, um, it's demagnetized. If it is, we'll pull it out and quench it. Anyway, that's the plan, so let's see how it goes here. That looks like it got nice and hot in there, didn't it? All right, let's see here. Open up the, uh, open up the foil. So, hey, that's pretty darn warm, I'll tell you. Yikes. I'm going to have to get a longer screwdriver. So there it is there. And that, my friends, is hot. All right, so I'm going to stay my distance this time. See if we can... Break the foil up here and find our part. Pretty sure it's in there somewhere. So there it is. Now let's see if we can find our part in there. There it is. You see that? All right, let's see if it's magnetized. Nope. It's definitely not magnetized. So what we're going to do now is pull it out and quench it in the water. Back this out a little bit. That's what we got right there, and you can see it's not too bad on the scale. Looks pretty good. And uh, what we're going to do is we'll clean that up, and then we'll have to temper it. We'll check it, make sure it's hard, and then we'll temper it. Okay, here's our master that we've been looking at, the uh, one we got all our dimensions off of. And I believe this has been hardened and then tempered. And the reason that we would want to do that 
is a couple of reasons. This one here is uh, one that I made quite a while back. It's probably the first one that I ever made of these tools. But if you look at the end of it, you can see it looks kind of cattywonker. And so uh, in using this tool, this was just mild steel, and uh, using this tool uh, in trying to get the nut out, you know, maybe the nut was stubborn, and you can see that it's kind of deformed the, uh, the nut end of this. I don't know if that makes sense to you, but it's been deformed. It's not going to work for more than that one occasion. And so it's too soft. And there's not a lot of meat here in the uh, sides of this. I mean, it's only 25, 30 thousandths on the flats. So there's not much there. It should be harder so it won't deform like this. On the other hand, if it's too hard, uh, you end up with something like this where it was brittle and again a stubborn nut uh, trying to extract it and it ended up breaking uh, two sides off on this one. So that can happen too. And as a matter well, I didn't mention it previously, but in the process of shooting this video, I actually made two tools. It's a good thing because uh, after I took this one out and quenched it uh, and cleaned it up and then I was getting ready to go uh, temper it, I dropped it on the floor, the concrete floor, and you can see it broke. And so uh, a good thing that I actually was making two of these, and this is the second one that I did not show anywhere on the video. And uh, that's kind of, as luck would hack, have it, the uh, the one that I showed was the one that got broke. So, um, But this one here, I cleaned it up after I took it out and quenched it. I very carefully uh, took it over and uh, buffed it. And then I put it back in the uh, kiln at about 475, and I left it in there for oh, about an hour or so. So this has been hardened, and then it's been tempered. So I can drop this one on the floor now, and it shouldn't break. should not be brittle to where we end up with uh, this kind of a situation. and shouldn't be too soft. Uh, it should be hard enough so we don't end up with a deformed uh, tool like that. So this is the final version. And uh, when you think about it, after all we've been through, the, uh, the uh, machining and the heat treating and then the heartbreak of having a break on you, uh, you know, spending 15 bucks, even 20 bucks for a tool like this uh, is not a bad investment, seems to me. It's actually pretty reasonable for the amount of effort that goes into it. But of course, uh, a lot of us like to do these things, make our own tools. It's part of the enjoyment of our uh, air gunning hobby and also gives us a chance to use our machine tools. So we do it for the fun of it more than uh, the price. All right. Well, I think that does it. Uh, thank you very much for watching.